you're watching the Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Welcome to Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. We're so honored and grateful that you would take out your busy schedule and be with us today. And I've been talking about uh, the law of honor. I'm not talking about going back to bondage and laws and all that. No, I'm just talking about a principle that's the same kind of principle of flight. It's called the law of lift or gravity. Uh, what goes up must come down unless it goes beyond our atmosphere. Uh, but in our, in our earth, there, even well beyond our earth, there is a sense of gravity. And uh, that's why a commenter, some kind of asteroid or whatever can fly by and be, be gravitized towards our planet uh, because of our gravity. There's a force behind that. Well, that's the same thing. It's, there's a law of gravity. There's a law of honor. There's a force behind that. And if we'll use that uh, honor right, it'll produce in our life. If we take honor and sow it like a seed, we'll reap it with a great harvest. Amen? So we're to show honor to God, and we've been talking about that, show honor to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We're to show honor to God and His Word, and, and it's more than just lip service. You know, some people say, I believe in God, but they don't live for God. Well, I, I believe in that Word. That's a good Word. Yeah, but you're not doing that Word. You know, if you honor something, especially the Word of God, the Word of God will want to or ask for change or demand change. And uh, if we're really honoring God's Word, and it says to change an attitude, change a perspective or position, uh, the proof that we're honoring that Word is we do that Word. We can't just be a hearer of the Word and not a doer of the Word. We can't just say we love God and not, and not do what He says. Even if it's in the form of instruction or rebuke, we, you know, sometimes our flesh fights it, it puts up barriers against correction. But correction is for our safety, it's for our good. If I saw a child running behind a car on the church parking lot, I'm going to yell at that kid. I'm going to yell real loud. And it may sound mean. It might, it might be aggressive, but I'm trying to spare that child's life and bring safety, bring them back to a position of safety. And that's what, that's what God's Word does. It brings us back into a place of safety. And we should honor that Word. It should mean something to us. The word honor means make heavy, to weight down, to carry weight. You honor God when you allow His Word to carry so much weight in your life that nothing or no one can sway you or move you off that word. That's what that means, to honor God, to honor His Word, that nothing can move you away from the truth of the Word of God, including offense. Amen. You can't be offended at the Word and, and be successful. Uh, in fact, a lot of times people don't realize that offense is created by unforgiveness. Uh, unforgiveness will make you a target of the devil. Uh, when you don't forgive someone, you stepped out of love. To step out of love is to step in the arena of sin. So always want to practice uh, in, in helping yourself uh, stay in love. Amen? Stay in, stay in the love of God. Amen? So um, love or honor is required uh, be, and worship is required. At the last broadcast, we talked about if you're going to honor God, you're going to have to honor those that God put you under, meaning your man and woman of God, your pastors. Amen. And these men and women uh, represent a fertile, uh, a fertile soil, good soil, good ground <clears throat> that's stable that, to create a great harvest in your life. So you can't just say, I love you, pastor, and not want to bring a supply of your treasures. 
that God blessed you in the first place. Amen. The Bible says this, elders or pastors who perform duties of bringing forth the word of God in your life are worthy of double honor, double honor and financial support. So that's found in 1 Timothy, if you'll turn with me to 1 Timothy, praise the Lord. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5. All right, praise the Lord. 5 verse uh, 17. I want to read this out of the English uh, uh, version, one of the English versions here. Um, it says, the elders who lead the church in good ways or in good ways should receive double honor. In particular, those who do work, who do the work of, of teaching and preaching. I'm going to read this in the <clears throat> King James Version. It says, let the elders that rule well, the word rule means have authority that you're submitted to, rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Well, how do you show honor? Well, you show honor by obeying the word that they preach. Amen. But also, double honor here means, especially in the labor of the word and doctrine, meaning they're teaching you the word of God. One scripture says, well, the next verse says, for the scripture says, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tends out the corn, or tread us out the corn, excuse me, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. So uh, <clears throat> this is taken, this scripture is taken from the book of uh, Deuteronomy and uh, Leviticus 19, where it says that uh, an ox, you don't just muzzle his, his mouth if he's working and treading out the wheat or the corn, meaning they're they're either using some type of uh, uh, grinder or something, and they're tied to a post, and they're just going in circles, and they're grinding out the corn or the the chaff out of the out of the wheat, and uh, that 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 uh, ox is working for you, and bringing out the best for you, uh, and so you don't just muzzle the ox you let him eat of what he's of what he's working with well the same thing a pastor is actually like an ox he's he's working and and he's sowing a word in you so that you'll get a harvest so that you'll live a life of honor that you'll live a life of victory and success and so uh, sometimes a pastor like like an ox he's not just uh uh, you know, just going in circles. It seems like that sometimes as a pastor because we go around the same old teaching over and over and over and say the same things over and over. But we're, we're trying to divide the fruit from the chaff, the things that, that hinder or slow you down or weight you down as a sheep uh, from running the good race set before you. Uh, we tell you to take off the weights, those things that easily beset you and keep you from running the race of victory, to win, amen, to make you a winner. So there are things that can slow you down, attitudes, uh, sin, uh, you know, the list goes on and on that would, would, would bring hindrances to your harvest. So that's what a, that's what a pastor does. He works uh, in your life to bring you good word that will produce a great harvest. So you don't say, well, that preacher, all he wants to do is our one our, why don't he, I've had people go to me and say, why don't you go to work like I work? I work, you know, and all you talk about is money, what money from here and there, and, and you don't work. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you, try my schedule sometime. Amen. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not just sitting around getting fat and, and uh, drinking hot chocolate, you know, and watching TV. No, we're, we're working on your behalf. I, I, I can spend sometimes eight hours in studying for, for a message. Sometimes I'll study that much and, and, or just feed on the Word of God and step in front of the pulpit and God say, turn to that scripture 
and, and minister on that scripture. And, and sometimes I go, God, well, I work so hard on that message. Well, you, you got it in you. The main thing is you get it in you. And then, and then uh, I'll have you say what I want you to say. And, and so I have to learn to be led by the Lord. Well, that took years to do that. It took many hours of preaching and teaching and studying. But not only that, we don't just study for ourselves. We study for folks. And, uh, and, and we pray for the people we're going to minister to. There's times God will get us up in the middle of the night. We'll be, we'll be praying for you. You know, does your boss pray for you, the place that you work at? Do they, do they want you to have total success and victory all the days of your life? Do they not just pray? Do they pray for you and your children, your children's children? No, no, they just expect you to come to work and work hard and you'll get paid what they tell you you can get paid. And uh, it, it, they don't have a heart for your life and for your future, but we do. You know, as a pastor, we're, we're highly concerned about those things. We're concerned about your wealth and your, your, your physical body and your mental capacity, that you have a sound mind. And everything that God says that will produce a victory and success in your life. A pastor does that. Amen? So, so that's what he said. You don't go uh, uh, tying up the, the blessing. Oh, you bring the blessing. Worship requires obedience and an offering. Go with me to Matthew. I'm going to go real quick. I'm going to, I might go a little overtime today on, the, on this one because I want this to come out real strong. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Matthew 2, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Who's that? This is, this is the wise men. The wise men came. They are being directed by God. They saw, they followed the star. They knew about, they knew about, read the scripture about Jesus coming, the prophecies of him coming. So they, first thing they did, they worshipped God. But you know that's not enough. It's not enough to just come to church and worship God. And when they had opened their treasures, did you hear that? Listen, your worship is incomplete. Your praise, your singing uh, is incomplete without your sowing. Amen. The wise men obeyed or were obedient to God when they came to worship. But Part of their worship included, included uh, presenting to Jesus an offering. They brought an offering. You can bring an offering to church. You can bring a treasure to church, to God. God honors the, those wise men by sparing their life. The king Herod wanted to kill them, destroy them. He, he was using them as spies. Uh, and then he was going to kill them. But God spared their life. Amen. They didn't just come to worship him. They came to give. Amen. So God honored the wise men by sending them uh, another way to avoid death by the hands of Herod. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac as an offering to worship God in Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. In fact, he was so convinced that God gave him the, the, the promise of his son in the book of Hebrews said he was so convinced that, all right, I'll take my son out and I'll drive a knife through his heart. I'll cause him to be a sacrifice. I'll shed his blood if that's what you want. I'll give you my only son, my, the one that you promised me, but I know that you'll raise him from the dead. The book of Hebrews talks about that. He believed that. He believed the promise that God gave him something and that and then God his, uh, would raise Isaac from the dead. And uh, so, but he, he worshiped God by bringing God an offering. Now, we know that God said, no, I got a goat over there. He's stuck in the bushes over here. You go get him, and he spared his own son. But that's, that, was, that was the beginning of the of the promise of God, where God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He allowed his son to die and bleed on a cross. He, that was something that God was saying, I'll never ask you to give something unless I'm willing to do it myself. God says, you come and you worship me with all your heart, you love me, 
with all your heart, all your might, all your soul, and then you bring a treasure. And, and God's saying, I'll love you unconditionally. I'll love you through the grace and mercy of God. But as you come and you not just love me, I'll bless you. You bring a treasure and that treasure, will, it will create a harvest of blessing, empowerment to prosper. When, when Paul wanted to go see the man of God, uh, or excuse me, not Paul, Saul. Saul wanted to see the man of God. He didn't come empty handed. Too many people come to church and they just want a blessing. In the book of uh, <clears throat> 1 Samuel, chapter 9, verse 6 through, through 8, you can look this story up uh, about Saul. He was out chasing donkeys, and he was out doing it for his father, and he was hungry, and he didn't know what to do because he wasn't finding these donkeys that belonged to his dad. And then he asked a servant. He says, man, he says, you got any ideas? And he says, man, I've heard about a, a prophet, a man of God, in this town down the street and, and or uh, over that mountain over there or some city. And he says his name is Samuel. And he, I, 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 I know he could help us. And he says, well, that sounds like a good idea. But he says, do we have a seed? Man, there's too many people who don't think that way. I don't go to church empty handed. I don't, Jen and I, we don't go to a service, to a convention or uh, a Holy Ghost meeting without bringing a seed. We always bring a seed. We always have something in our hand. Uh, and so Saul, he wanted to go see the man of God, but he didn't come empty-handed. It wasn't much, but it was, it was the right amount. It was the right amount because it was from a heart of worship and a heart of honor. Amen? And so when we do these things and when we learn that honor is something that will always produce a harvest, then we'll know and have confidence when we sow it, we'll reap from it. Amen? Well, thank you for tuning in today. We're so honored and uh, grateful, and we call you blessed and highly favored. If you're in the area of Fireball Faith Fellowship here in Fireball, come and visit with us. If you don't have a home church, maybe God will send you to our church. But we also started a new church in Fresno, and we meet on in Herndon and Fresno at the event center. Uh, we'll change soon, so keep keep uh, up to date, and we'll keep you posted. But right there, we rent that event center there uh, of the Hampton Inn on First or Fresno and Herndon. Amen. So we're one church in two locations. And thank you. Love you. Call you blessed. Highly favored. Until the next broadcast. God bless.